As a non-native speaker of English who grew up reading the stories of J.R.R. Tolkien, I have always spelled the word dwarves like this, as it is spelled within The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. You too perhaps, while reading a book even outside of Middle-earth, or playing a video game, or even casually browsing the web, may have stumbled upon two different spellings of the same word, describing a by now staple of the fantasy genre, the dwarves. Or is it dwarves? Well, in this video, we'll examine the origins of the word dwarf throughout history and folklore, as well as discover the reason behind the discrepancy of the two spellings of this famous fantasy race. To start off, in modern English, the word dwarf can find its origins in the language of the Anglo-Saxons from over a thousand years ago, and which was originally spelled Tverg. The Old English word itself likely originated from the Proto-Germanic Tvergas, while in other Germanic languages of that age, such as Old Norse and Old High German, the word was Tverg and Tverg, respectively. While the origins of the word even earlier than the Proto-Germanic Tvergas is uncertain, it may find its origins in the Indo-European root for damage, Dur, which itself could be connected to the mythological origins of the dwarfs as being associated with death. Going back to the Old English, the plural of the word Tverg was Tvergas. As the centuries passed, however, already from approximately the 14th century and through Middle English, the word Tverg and its plural Tvergas evolved to the simpler dwarf and its plural Dwaro, which itself became dwarfs, spelled with an F which followed the general trends of the English language of the time as it further evolved from its more heavily Germanic roots. For centuries, the spelling of the word remained as it was, undisputed. This started to change when, towards the end and especially after the First World War, J.R.R. Tolkien would begin writing his Legendarium. Within it, instead of writing the plural version of Dwarf as Dwarfs with an F, he instead chose to write it as Dwarfs with a V-E-S. This was so controversial, especially for a philologist like himself, and at Oxford no less, that the original publisher and editor of The Hobbit in 1937 would go on to correct Tolkien's spelling of the word without his permission in the early editions of the book, something that the professor had to go to some lengths changing back. If nowadays you read the foreword of The Hobbit, you will find the issue addressed there. But why then did Tolkien change the established and correct spelling, and why did he go to so much trouble? The answer is simple. Tolkien wanted to create an entire world from the ground up, filled with its own legends and peoples and an entire history, and more so than this, he wanted to create a mythology. He wanted his Middle Earth to have a feeling of mystery and adventure, of the unknown. He wished for his creation to be unique, but he also wanted to instill in the reader a certain, very specific feeling. What is that feeling, you might ask? That feeling is awe, it is wonder, it is being part of something that is epic in scope and incredibly vast in its proportions. The word dwarfs was what was correct in the commonly used modern English. It is what people use daily to describe these creatures, provided they for whatever reason wanted to talk about dwarfs every day of course. But the point is, it had lost its wonder. It was used in countless children's story and was even more popularized in Snow White and its animated adaptation which came out in 1937, just a few months after The Hobbit itself. And while The Hobbit was also a children's story, Tolkien wanted his world to be something more. He wanted Thor and his companions, the king under the mountain, and all of these wonderful legends to feel ancient, and the word dwarfs with an F, in his opinion, while being correct, did not help him achieve the overall feeling he desired. Instead, he used dwarfs. But why dwarfs specifically? Because, as a linguist and a professor of English, Tolkien was deeply immersed in the Anglo-Saxon language, and so his version of the word was a modern take on the ancient version of the original word, Tvergas. In letter 17, which was sent by Tolkien to his publisher Stanley Unwin on the 15th of October 1937, with the book being released on September the 21st of the same year, the professor better explains his use of the word dwarfs. Tolkien said, and I quote, No reviewer, although all have carefully used the correct dwarfs themselves, has commented on the fact that I used throughout the incorrect plural dwarfs. I am afraid it is just a piece of private bad grammar, rather shocking in a philologist, but I shall have to go on with it. Perhaps my dwarf, since he and the gnomes are only translations into approximate equivalents of creatures with different names and rather different functions in their own world, may be allowed the peculiar plural. The real historical plural of dwarf is Tuarus anyway. Rather a nice word, but a bit too archaic. Still, I rather wish I had used the word Dwaro. In the letter, we see that Tolkien was indeed aware of his use of the incorrect spelling, though he rather liked it and would continue to use it within The Lord of the Rings, as by that point, it was too late to change to his preferred word Dwaro for the trilogy. And as discussed in letters of the same period, large edits to The Hobbit through different editions got considerably more expensive for the publisher the larger they were. Nonetheless, as you may know, he did use the word Dwaro in Dwarodelf, a name for Casa Doom or Moria. 
Since the incredible popularity of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, what used to be a private bad grammar used by Tolkien to make his role stand out became popular enough that the etymologically correct spelling of the word has been used increasingly less. More so than that, it has even been observed that the word dwarves has come to represent dwarves of fantasy as a whole in certain contexts, even outside of The Lord of the Rings. While its correct form dwarfs with an F is becoming more specific to traditional fairy tales or even the description of real life conditions, such as dwarfism. Although in recent years, the use of that word to refer to actual humans has been significantly limited due to its parallel with the fantasy race. Languages are living, breathing things. They are organisms that evolve and change based on countless different factors, whether environmental or societal, or simply for the sake of ease. While I myself am certainly no philologist, I do think that Tolkien being as influential as he is, we may see in the future, if we haven't already, an even wider acceptance of his spelling of the word in modern English as it continuously evolves. I would love to hear your thoughts on this, and feel free to comment down below which form of the word you use. Thank you very much for watching.